Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to discover the power of profiles in Adobe Camera Raw. So a profile is a set of instructions that determines how the information in a file is processed. I like to think of them as setting the base interpretation of the image. They're the starting point for all of my other adjustments. They're non-destructive and can be changed at any time without any loss of quality. And because profiles can use color lookup tables to remap colors and tones, they can process images in new and unique ways. So we're going to start by looking at some of the profiles designed specifically to work with raw files. Now, to make profiles easier to access, they have been relocated from the Calibration tab to the Basic tab. The default profile for raw files is Adobe Color. Now, if the image that you're working on isn't set to Adobe Color by default, most likely one of two things is happening. Either you're working with a JPEG file, in which case the profile will just say Color by default because you can't apply a raw profile to a JPEG, or you're working with a legacy file, in which case you will see the previously embedded profile, which you can choose to change at any time. Now, Adobe Color was designed to be a great starting point for any color image. The goal of this profile is to render a relatively neutral baseline image that closely matches the original colors and tones in the original scene so that you can then refine the image and achieve the exact look and feel that you want. The Adobe Color Profile has several improvements over the previous default profile. It's a bit warmer in the reds, yellows, and oranges, and it renders skin tones better. It also has a very small increase in contrast as well as slight adjustments for memory colors, and it does a better job of moving highlights between different color spaces. When the treatment is changed to black and white, the profile is automatically set to the new Adobe Monochrome Profile. This Adobe Monochrome Profile is designed to be the best starting point for any black and white image. It slightly shifts colors as they're converted to grayscale, brightening the warmer colors and darkening the cooler colors. And it also adds a small amount of contrast, but it allows a lot of headroom for editing. There are additional raw profiles that were created as starting points for specific types of images, which we can access by clicking on the profile browser. The first two in the Adobe Raw grouping, the Adobe Color and Adobe Monochrome, are the two that we just discussed. We can preview any of these profiles by hovering the cursor above it. We need to click to actually apply the profile. Now, every raw image must have a profile, but it can only have one profile. So clicking on one profile removes the one that was previously applied. Now, let's look at how these additional raw profiles differ from the defaults. So Adobe Landscape adds a bit more saturation to all of the colors in the image, and it enhances the blues and greens. While the profile adds a slight amount of contrast to the overall image, it also helps to maintain details by slightly compressing the highlight and shadow values in scenes that have significant contrast. Adobe Neutral reduces color saturation as well as contrast, rendering a very flat, low contrast version of the image. It's designed to give you the most headroom for post-processing, and it's a great profile to start with if you have an image that has delicate colors or gradients. Adobe Portrait is tailored especially for portrait images. It has a slightly more gentle tone curve, and it renders really nice skin tones. Adobe Standard was the default profile in previous versions of Camera Raw. And Adobe Vivid adds vibrance and contrast while still rendering natural skin tones, so it's a great place to start for images of people that are in a landscape. Now, the next group of raw profiles are the Adobe Camera Matching Profiles. These profiles are created by Adobe and are designed to match the preset styles that can be set by using the menus on a camera. Because the style options differ among different camera manufacturers, the list of profiles is going to change depending on your camera. The legacy RAW profiles are included in order to maintain backwards compatibility when working with legacy files. Below the divider are several groups of creative profiles. Now, these profiles are designed to apply more of a stylistic effect to an image rather than set a neutral starting point. 
and they can be applied not only to RAW files, but also to JPEG and TIFF files. So in the artistic category, profiles are designed to be much edgier, and they typically have much stronger color shifts. Once you select a profile in the Creative Profile categories, the intensity of Creative Profiles can be fine-tuned using the Amount slider to either reduce or amplify the effect. There are a number of creative black and white profiles. Some of them will add contrast while others will decrease the contrast. Some limit the dynamic range by lifting the blacks in the image, while others emulate the effects of using color filters with film. Below that in the modern grouping, these are profiles designed to create unique effects that fit more with the current photography styles. And in the vintage area, we have a number of profiles designed to replicate the effects of analog imagery. If you install profiles from third parties, they're going to appear in this area right here. Now, as we move through different profiles and you find ones that you like, you can click on the star icon in order to add them to your favorites. To remove a favorite, just click on the star icon again. You can also view profiles as a list instead of the grid view. Rolling over the name will still preview that profile. Once you've selected the profile that you want to apply, you can double click on the profile, which will apply it as well as close the profile browser, or you can click the close button. Remember, the profile is just the starting point and we can change it at any time. In fact, we can quickly access our favorites from the drop down menu without having to return to the profile browser. And profiles are independent from all of the other controls in Camera Raw. So once you've applied a profile, you can still use any of the other controls in any of the other panels to make additional modifications to your images because profiles can't change slider values. You can even save a profile as a part of a preset. For example, here I like the Adobe Landscape profile, but I wanna create a preset that not only applies this profile, but also desaturates the blue sky. I'll move to the HSL adjustments and desaturate the blues, then click on the preset tab, add a new preset, give it a name, and then be sure to include the treatment and profile as well as the HSL adjustments. Once the preset's been created, if I move to another image, I can apply that same profile and HSL adjustment by just clicking on the preset. You may have also noticed that Camera Raw is now shipping with default presets, and when you position your cursor on top of them, you get a preview of that preset in the preview area. We can also click on any preset in order to add it to our favorites, which will appear at the top of the preset panel. Presets are also saved as XMP files now, making them compatible across not only Camera Raw, but also all of the Lightroom products and Camera Raw as a filter in Photoshop. So now you know, I'm Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.